continuing to solve other types of equations. We're going to find all solutions and we're going to be sure to check our answers as well. Alright, look at this first equation. It's completely different than what we've seen. We have fractions. Uh, typically the approach to solve this rational equation, remember rational, ratio, fractions, a uh, typical way to solve this rational equation is to first of all get rid of all these fractions. It makes it difficult to work with. So the way we do that is we identify all the different denominators in the problem. Well this denominator is just one, uh, this denominator is two, this denominator is x, and we build the least common denominator and we go through and we multiply every single term in the equation by that least common denominator to clear this equation of fractions. So. I'm going to rewrite the problem so it doesn't get too crowded. I want to have the original problem intact so when I go to check my uh, proposed solutions uh, it's not crowded and I can kind of see what I'm dealing with. So I'm going to rewrite the problem. Alright, so um, identifying all the different denominators, building the least common denominator, that would be 2x. Okay, I'm just going to show myself that I'm going to multiply everything in this equation by 2x. And I'm going to go ahead and put 2x over 1. It might not be necessary when I multiply by a term uh, that doesn't have a denominator. So I'm going to just try and um, ignore the 1 if I'm multiplying 2x by something like x that doesn't have a, a denominator other than 1. But this will come in handy when I do have to multiply um, by those terms that do have a fraction. All right, so the best thing for you to do is once you identify that least common denominator, let's go ahead and just show ourselves that what we're going to do is we're going to multiply that through the whole equation. All right, well the result of multiplying 2x by x is 2x squared. All right, we don't want to create a fraction, we want to get rid of fractions. All right, so think about multiplying 2x over 1 times 3 over x. Well, first of all, look for things that divide out. So that x is going to divide out with that x on top leaving us to multiply the remaining 2 times the 3 that's here. So that result is 6. And that's the whole objective is to get rid of these fractions. If you don't get rid of the fraction then you didn't build the right least common denominator. Alright, next we're going to multiply 2x by um, 1 half. Notice that you want to try and divide out anything you can first. This 2 is going to divide out with that 2 leaving an x in the numerator to multiply by that 1 so we're left with plus x. And then, oh joy, now we get to solve this quadratic equation. So I'm going to go ahead and solve it for 0. And it looks like I probably don't want to do complete the square because that coefficient is not 1. And that we did not practice and is kind of complicated. So completing the square is out, extracting square roots is out because I have a linear term. It looks like it's either factoring or quadratic formula. Uh, if I'm going to factor, a is not 1, so I'm going to do my multiply add chart to help me factor by grouping. So a times c is negative 12, and I want factors of negative 12 that add to negative 1. So 1 and 12 are factors of 12. I'm going to ignore the negative just while I'm building my factors of 12, 2 and 6 and 3 and 4. Alright, and you want the product to be negative, so one of these two factors in each that's going to have to be negative, uh, choose wisely, make one of the factors negative so the sum is negative 1, and it looks like, I'm going to put a comma here, if I put a negative here, that sum is negative 1 when I add those factors. So factoring by grouping, keep 2x squared, only one of these factors is negative, so I'll put that up first, minus 4 and I need an x, and then a plus 3x. Is pausing for just a second and collecting these results in the negative x, bring down the minus 6 that equals 0. We, we rewrote the problem so that we could put parentheses around the first two and we're going to group the last two. This is a plus so I don't have to change this sign. Common factor 2x leaving x minus 2 plus hope when I take out the common factor here I'm left with the same binomial. If I don't get the same binomial then I've made a mistake I can go back and try and find it in my work. Okay now we can factor into a binomial that contains the common factor and then the remaining factors 2x plus 3. 
continuing to solve, set each factor equal to zero, and solve. Subtract a three, divide by two, x is negative three halves. All right, and the suggestion was that I should check all my solutions. So let's plug in two here and two here. So three halves plus a half is four halves, so that checks. I know I'm doing that kind of quick. Uh, plug in negative three halves here. Negative three halves here, I would keep change flip. Looks like I'm gonna get negative two plus one half is negative three halves, so that does check too. I know I did that kind of quickly, but you can use your calculator to help you with that. Okay, I'm gonna come over here and do another example, solving other types of equations. So we have 20 minus x over x equals x. Um, like example one, um, you can multiply by the least common denominator, and since x is over one, that least common denominator would be x. Okay, another technique would be to put x over one and do cross multiply. The results are gonna be the same at the end. Uh, just in keeping with example one, I think I'll just go ahead and uh, rewrite the problem and then multiply by the least common denominator. Again, remember this is over one, so between one and x, the least common denominator is um, x. I go ahead and put x over one because I know I'm gonna be multiplying by at least one fraction, okay? But I'll disregard the one when I multiply it by a term that does not have a fraction. Show what you're multiplying by. Okay, when you multiply these two fractions together, uh, don't multiply the x in because the whole intent is to divide out this x. And you can see when you multiply these two fractions, these x's divide out, leaving just one up here. So this results in just getting 20 minus x equals x times x is x squared. Oh, I think that's a minus. Um, the resulting equation needs to be solved. It's quadratic. Since x squared is over here and it has a positive coefficient of one, I'm gonna zero out this side. Oh, that looks like a heart. <laughs> so x squared, <clears throat> add x, minus 20. I traded sides. Notice that I can try and factor this. The coefficient is one. I don't have to do grouping. So if you build the two binomials, Factors of negative 20, because one times negative 20 is negative 20. Factors of negative 20 that add to one. So this will be x, this will be x. You can do your multiply add chart here, but maybe you see that the factors of negative 20 that add to one would be five and four. But the five would have to be the negative one to add to get positive one. You know where we're going here. I'm not boxing till I check in a minute. All right, plugging in five, I'm gonna get uh, 15 over five, which is, 15 over five is three? Yeah, 15 over five is three, but X has to be five, so great. That's an extraneous, extra, extraneous solution. So that's not a solution. So we don't want to erase any of our work because our work supports that that was a proposed solution. But what you do is you kind of lightly cross it off saying that that's not a solution. Let's plug in negative four. So 20 minus negative four is 24 divided by negative four. Negative six, but that doesn't equal negative four. Oh my gosh, neither one of these work. They're both extraneous. Oh, so that means we did all that work and we got nothing. So no solution, circle with a line through it. Sometimes that happens. I'm still thinking about this one. You know what? I don't remember them both canceling, so this is not right. I need to go through and I'm gonna change this color and I'm gonna fix this. You can erase yours at some point. So, you know what? Right here. 
I got myself into trouble when I factored. I need a positive 1. And this result is not going to give me a positive 1. This should be a plus 5 and a minus 4, which means this would be plus 5 and this would be minus 4. Great. So this would be x equals negative 5. It's easier for you to erase than for me to erase this, this pencil. Uh, and then this would be x equals 4. So I'm going to cross that off. Now I'm going to check these new solutions. Plug in negative 5, get 25, divided by negative 5 is negative 5. Yep, they're both going to check. I thought they both worked. All right. It could be that this is like my sixth video, three hours later. This is going to happen, and I just don't want to redo this whole video. So that's good for you guys to see that anyway, that I'm going to make mistakes like that too. <laughs> All right. That explains why I was so excited about that heart, because like I said, this is like my third hour of making videos. Anyway, we fixed that little mistake, my mistake, and then we found the solutions that worked. Hopefully you've cleaned up your work. All right, let's continue solving other types of equations. All right, some more rational equations here to solve. So identifying that we have a couple of fractions, we want to get rid of the fractions. We're going to build the least common denominator. So I'm going to rewrite the problem. All right, so we have a denominator of x, x plus 1, and just 1 here. Well, the least common denominator will, will be built from the product of these two. So our LCD is going to be x times quantity x plus 1. So x times quantity x plus 1 all over 1. I'm going to disregard the 1 when I multiply by the 3 because the 3 doesn't have a denominator other than 1. Show that you're going to multiply by every term. Okay, so let's focus on this first product here. Remember, you want to divide out the x with the x that remain that leaves remaining the x plus 1. That's nice. I've got this minus. Okay, now focus on multiplying this LCD times this fraction. Well, this x plus 1 down here is going to divide out with this x plus 1, leaving the remaining factor of x to be multiplied by the remaining numerator. So that's minus x equals, and then I've got to multiply 3 times this LCD. Well, I'm going to go ahead and put the 3 up front and keep the x and the x plus 1. So this was the LCD and I had to multiply it by the 3 and common practice has us put the 3 up front. Um, let's clean this side up first. These will cancel and I'm left with 1 equals. Over here I'm going to have to distribute. So I'll get 3x squared plus 3x. Uh, it's quadratic, so now we think about our techniques for solving quadratic equations. I'm going to zero the left side out. Then I'm going to trade sides. Okay, now we have to come up with a way uh, to solve this quadratic equation. Um, probably factoring or quadratic formula. I try and avoid completing the square if I can. Um, let's see if it factors. And the quickest way to check is to do your multiply add chart. Um, a times c is negative 3. And we need factors of negative 3 that add to positive 3. The only factors of 3 are 1 and 3. And we have to make one of them negative. And so if one of them becomes negative, there's no way that we're going to add to 3. So this real quickly tells us that factor by grouping, box, whatever, uh, is not going to work. So it looks like I have to do quadratic formula on this one. All right, so here we go, quadratic formula. Let's first of all identify A and B and C. So the solution's x, given by the quadratic formula, x equals negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4 times a times c. And that's all over 2 times a or 6. My goodness.
okay, this is minus in here. This is 9, this will be t plus 12, so that's 21. Uh, square root of 21 doesn't simplify, so we're done. And you can't divide out a 3 from these two numbers because you'd also need to divide it out from a number that's in front of the radical. So we have two solutions, negative 3 minus square root of 21 over 6 and negative 3 plus square root of 21 over 6. All right, so at this point, that's three examples, and I do have three more. And uh, just looking at the time and everything for YouTube, we're going to do that in the next video. So I'll see you with example four in just a second.